we're already in the month of May. And we're just about ready to step into half, halfway in the year. You know, next month will be six months into the year, leaving us six months left in this year. And I think it's so very important, and not just today, but I would I would dare say this week and and even next week, I'm going to be talking about change and planning, uh, the importance of planning and. I think so many of us are missing, missing out on really what God has called us to, mainly because, you know, we're not, let's just say, positioning ourselves to change, positioning ourselves to see that there's another way of, of living out our lives. And I'm not just talking about living out our lives to, to uh, glorify self or to make our lives better, but I'm talking about living our lives in alignment and in agreement with God's plan and purpose for our lives. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Are you hearing me? You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. I love to say you are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose, and God's will and purpose for your life is always better than what you can come up with for yourself. I really do believe today's message is going to bless you real good. I, and as I said, I've, I've been kind of like studying this thing here and really looking over this word here because, you know, even at my age, and I'm up there in age, but I still feel that God still has a, a bigger plan and purpose for my life. And I don't just want to sit on the sidelines and, and hope something happens, wait for something happen, wait for something to happen. Uh-uh. I want to be a part of this. I'm not God didn't save us so we can be a spectator. He saved us so we can participate in all of what he's doing in, you know, on the planet, in the earth, in the kingdom. You are a change maker. You are someone that, you know, hey, that can make a difference. So uh many in the body of Christ are not living the life they were hoping to have, that life they was hoping to see, step into mainly because they don't understand the process and the power of change. And as I said, I'm going to be talking about uh, change, uh, uh, the, the power and, and purpose of planning. And it's so very important that we understand that it's never too late. The sooner you start, the better. See, everybody, every one of us, every one of us have to deal with time. I'm going to say that again. Every one of us, have to deal with time. And every one of us have to deal with change. The two most important forces, and I should say powerful and important forces on the earth, is time and change. Are you hearing me this morning? The two most powerful and important forces on the earth is time in change. There's no way to escape time unless you're in the box. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Pushing up roses or flowers, or grass. But you're here. You're viewing this. Whether on YouTube, Zoom, or whatever, you're viewing this. So that means you're still here. That means you still have time to change. There's no way to escape time and no way to escape change which means all of us have to learn how to manage our time. Manage our time. Lord, I, I, I can just hope that we're not spending our time the way we used to spend our money back in the day. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you know what I'm talking about. We were reckless. And some of us might be reckless today in spending our, our, you know, our money, so on and so forth. And we have to be able to see that time Ooh, man, time is not to be wasted. Time is not to be squandered. You know, and we also have to do what while we're, while we're managing, while we're learning to manage our time, we also have to learn to embrace the changes that's going to take place and transpire in our lives. Nothing stays the same. Everything is changing in our lives. Everything is changing around us. That new car you brought, are you hearing me? Not new no more. I know the first couple of weeks I got it in the car wash and I want to keep it shiny and I'm, I'm, I'm polishing it up and 
all that good stuff. But after a couple of weeks or months, I'm not as, you know, diligent in reference to keeping that car the way it was when it rolled out of the, of the showroom, so on and so forth. When I moved in that new house, man, I was excited. Whew. But look, look, what, 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 what's wrong now? What's wrong with the house that you loved on day one? Why is it after a couple of years you don't feel good about it? You know, things change and, and sometimes all you need to do, you might not like or feel comfortable in the house. Well, maybe add a little paint to the wall, you know, buy some flowers, do something, you know, get a rug, do something. They're going to add change to to the environment. And, and, and you know, we, we there's so much more that we can be doing, but we have to be able to see the importance of doing what we do in that season that we're called to do it in. Change is going to take place in all of our lives. None of us are going to be able to escape. And every one of us is given, and every one of us is given 24 hours in a day. You are guaranteed 24 hours a day. Are you hearing me? In other words, there's nobody on the planet that's able to get 26, 27 hours, and you get 23. Uh-uh. All of us are given 24 hours in a day. So we all start at the same place, but we don't always end up at the same place. And when I say end up at the same place, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about doing the same thing, but I'm talking about in reference to bringing about that which would uh, define us, that which would make us complete. You know, you, you, you can't buy time. Time is a gift from God. And I realize you cannot buy time because it's a gift from God. So we should realize that no one is richer or poorer when it comes to time. None of us. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nobody on the planet. They might have buku money. They might have some money. But that don't mean that they are richer than you when it comes to time. It's how you are managing your time is going to define, you know, your respect for time or dis disrespect for time. It doesn't matter who you are. All of us should give some serious thought on how we're living our life. All of us. You know, I mean, sometimes we just need to slow our roll. We need to, you know, need to park. When I say park, you know, take up a seat and just think about what you're living Think about what you're living, you know, and, and the key to your success now, and I don't think there's not one of us on this line today viewing on YouTube or whatever, don't want to be successful. The key to your success is the, is the fact that you have made a decision to plan and manage your life. If you want the keys to success, you have to plan and then you have to learn how to manage your life with an understanding that time and change will move with or without you. Are you hearing me? Time and change is going to move with or without you. Choose you this day. Mm. Not only who you're going to serve, but I know I, I'm here to serve God. You're here to serve God, but, you know, you have to be able to see the importance of time and change. Time is a commodity, Lord Jesus. How much are you worth? How much do you value your life, yourself, the things that you're doing today? And I know back in the day, man, I made some, ooh, some, some crazy moves. I made some mistakes. I've done some things that I'm not so pleased with or, or happy about. I know I could have done better than that. But the real deal is I didn't have the information. But I have some information now, and I'm thanking God that I don't have to live that way no more. See, and you come to realize now, success is in your hands. Happiness is in your hands. Choose. You can choose to be happy, even in the midst of the hardships and the trials and the tests that we're going through. Success is in your hands because all of us will have to deal with the elements of time in change. Are you hearing me? See, at the start of every day, mm, 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 the start of every day, 
you were blessed with the gift of time. He woke me up this morning, clothed in my right mind. He's given me the activity of my limbs. Those of you who are not laid up in the hospital, getting ready to be operated on, surgery, so on and so forth, you are blessed. Are you hearing me? Because there's some folk, you know, hey, Linda Hepburn going for surgery this morning. This young lady, Alicia, going for open heart surgery this morning. So there's some people going through. You look at what is going on even over there in Ukraine. I mean, that whole country, my God. Mm, mm -mm. Russia, Putin have bombed everything. I mean, taking out schools. I mean, at one time we used to, you know, the fight was against soldiers, but now we're trying to, 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 to kill, you know, mothers and grandmothers and babies and children. It's, it's crazy. But this is the evil that is in men. And we want so much, but we do so little with what we have. You know, and until we can learn how to master time and embrace the change that's going to take place in all of our lives, all of us understand we all are going to come face to face with the effects of change. All of us are going to come face to face with the effects of change. It's a part of life. Can't get around it. Can't escape it. And, 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 and we all must realize that no two days are ever going to be the same. I don't care who you are. No, and, you know, you might be on the sick bed. No two days will ever be the same. There's something taking place in each day that is different than the day before. No two days will ever be the same. Matter of fact, Psalms 90 and eight says this, for all of our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. In other words, you writing a story about your, every day you're writing something in the Lamb Book of Life, you're saying something about yourself. Do you really appreciate, do you really value this life? You know, we talk so much about how much we love the Lord. And God has given us so much when he's given us the son and the word, the Holy Spirit, and thanks be to God for his unspeakable gifts and so on and so forth. But do you really appreciate what God has given you? I mean, so many are complaining. So many are uh, 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 looking at the glass half full, or let's just say half empty instead of half full. You know, in other words, you know, you got to think optimistic. I, I see life as being better than, you know, thank you, Jesus. Life is much better than it used to be. I might not be where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. Some of us are still in that cycle of dysfunction, still in that cycle of hurt, pain, and shame. Why? Because they don't want to uh, respect the time that they have or the changes that are taking place in their lives. So whether you like it or not, your life is telling a story about you. Your life is telling a story about you. What you believe and what you don't believe. Who you believe, so on and so forth. Whether you're trusting in the Lord or trusting in yourself. You know, and when you're trusting in yourself, you're giving place to the devil. See, and, and, and as far as I'm concerned, let God be true and let every man be a liar. See, so I've come to stand on, let's just say, on this word of God. That's my foundation. Jesus is the rock. Are you hearing me? He's a rock that won't move. Mm, mm, mm. Man. And, and here's an important point for those of you who are taking notes. Here's a very important point that I think you need to jot down. Your dream is only a dream until you give it a plan. Until your dream has a plan, it's only a dream. You have to, you have to have a plan. You have to put some, put some, put your thoughts together. You have to you know, figure out how you're going to make this dream a reality. And that's why plans are very uh, important today, vital to your success. 
you, you, you can dream of the kind of life or the future you want to live, but until you get up in the morning with a plan on how to manifest and materialize that dream, it is only a dream. Are you hearing me? It is only a dream. And so many of us, man, I mean, we, you know, we live in health and skelter lives. And I'm not talking about people in the world. I'm talking about those of us in the body of Christ. Living a health and skelter life, living off the top of our heads, and that really from our hearts. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. You know, we 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 have to really uh, you know, anchor down. We really need to be able to, let's just say to align our lives with this word of God in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. God doesn't, God saved you to be a winner. Not a victim, a winner. Uh, not a loser, but someone that is striving to be all that they can be while they're still here. Because hey, all of us have an a end date. Are you hearing me? This is not your home whether you know it or not, this is not your home. So don't try to make yourself so comfortable while you're here. I mean, God wants you to be happy, comfortable, so on and so forth. But realize one day you're going to have to leave this place. God wants you to make a difference while you're here. And that's what this is about. Seeing the possibilities, seeing the impossible, seeing within yourself that man, I can do this. What are you doing today? What are you doing today to make January 1st, that New Year resolution come to pass? How much closer are you to fulfilling that plan, that dream, that idea? Or did you put it on the shelf? Are you waiting for someone to, to come in to give you a hand? Are you waiting for an opportunity? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? See, understand the secret to, to your success in life will always be birthed out of the choices and decisions you make when it comes to managing your time in the elements of change. See, I, I, I'm telling you, boy, you, you, you have to be able to see that. You know, and, and some of us, you know, I know before we came to Christ, you know, we was, you know, we were just here, really, basically just here, you know, like a ship sailing without a rudder, without a sail, without a oars or anything, no way of steering or directing our lives. We were just going with the flow. But now I'm in Christ. Greater is he that is in you than that devil that is after you. That devil want to bring you back into your yesterday. He want to bring you back into your history, the hurtful past, the shameful past. But God has called you to something wonderful, something great. Every morning, I fail not to tell you that you are amazing. Because you are. You are. You have an amazing God in you. You have his word. You have his spirit. I mean, hey, how can you lose with the stuff you use? You're in the word every morning. Thank you, Jesus. It's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Those of us who are led by the spirit are sons and daughters of God. Thank you, Jesus. See, the principal key to managing your time and change is planning. That's why I say the importance of planning. Planning is the key ingredient, the most important element for lasting change. Some of us will go shopping, we'll make up a shopping list because I don't want to, you know, I want to stay within my budget and so on and so forth. I'm planning a party. I'm going to, I'm going to make up, I'm going to, I'm going to plan a party. I'm going to plan a, a vacation. You know, we do. We make up plans for everything, but what plans have you made for your life? For your life. That's a gift from God. And so many are wasting this gift that God has blessed us with because we're looking at our limitations. 
We're looking at these setbacks. We're looking at these setups of the devil and so on and so forth. But we can't see the blessings of God that is on our lives, the gifts that he's blessed us with, the bliss, the gifts to bring about. Ooh, Lord Jesus. You are unique. You are a designer's original. There's not another person on the planet like you. Are you hearing me today? There's not another person on the planet like you, never was and never will be. This is your season. This is your time and season to do what God has sent you here to do. God wants you to become your best. Stop going after what's good when God is offering you his best. Good is good for a season or for a little while, but best will last, will outlast all that other stuff. God has put the best in you when he gave you his son. And now with the best in you, the best should be coming out of you. You are made in his image. Oh, I'm getting all ahead of myself. You are made in his image after his likeness. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, who's blessing you, who's enabling you to become that man, that woman he wants you to be. Man, you got so much going for you. I know your money might be funny. Your change might be strange. I know your, your body might be racked with some pain. You don't know how you're going to make it. You don't know how you're going to get through whatever it is you might be going through. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God's got you. I'm here to tell you this morning, he's a way maker. I'm here to remind you this morning, he's a promise keeper. I'm here to tell you this morning, all things are working together for the good for those of us who love God and are called according to his purpose. We learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Planning is the key ingredient. Key ingredient. See, planning is the only regulator of time and change. See, planning will help you regulate your time and change. I, 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 set, I set my time to do this and and I don't want to go beyond that because I got to step into something else. And, you know, hey, you know, our school system set with time and so on and so forth for the classes and so on and so forth. I mean, you go to church. Well, sometimes we run over because the word gets so good or the songs get so nice. And we just want to just we just want to stay in the presence. There's no real limit on how long you want to stay in. Because, Lord, I just want to stay on my knees sometimes. I just want to I just want to stay in that place. that I'm, I, I, I've created an atmosphere where the presence of God is there. And I, I just don't want to leave that right now. But you have to be able to see that the principal key to managing time and change is planning. Planning. Planning is the key ingredient. I'm going to keep saying this because I want you to understand the importance. God wants you to understand the importance of planning. What are your plans? And some of you already have plans to go on a vacation. Oh, the weather's getting nice, stepping into the summer. I want to go on vacation. I've been locked down, shut down for two years because of this pandemic. And I want to visit family. I want to go to the beach. I want to go to the ocean. Uh, I just want to go hiking. I want to go. I, I just got to get out of this house. Planning. Making plans. Making plans. But you want to make those plans that's going to benefit you. Benefit the kingdom. Benefit the work and the call that is on your life. You know, I, I, I look at Rev Kev going back, you know, yeah, hey, he didn't retire from correction. And hey, he's going back into uh, the correction, right back into the prison system, right as Island, to do what the minister is a chaplain. Reminds me of Moses come out of Egypt and then hey, God sent him back to deliver the, the, the children of Israel. And there's some men, there's some folk up on the inside of there that need to come out with a new mindset. And God says, okay, you did your, your, your tour of duty, but now I'm going to send you back up in there. Why? Because I want to use you to change the minds and hearts of some men that are there. Mm -hmm. This thing is serious, saints. But you got to be able to see yourself as that someone that want to give God a yes. Someone that says, yes, I'm available. God's looking for somebody that's willing 
to, to, to do his will and not their will. He was a lesser man would have said, oh, I done did my time. I ain't going back. Mm -hmm, not me, God. Mm -hmm. Use somebody else. Send somebody else. But when you know the call that is on your life, when you understand purpose, Lord Jesus, and when you understand that you're only given some seasons to do what you're called to do, what do you do? You rise up to the challenges that you're going to face in this life. And as I said, planning is, a, is the only regulator of time and change. And without a plan, you will waste your life. You know, we need to get, we need to instill this in our children. Those parents, those of you who are parents viewing this, watching this, or hearing this, you need to, you need to tell your children of the importance of planning their future. I remember when I was in school and the teacher said, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Matter of fact, my uncle used to ask, what do you want to do when you grow up? He was a barber. What do you want to do when you grow up? The way I grew up in the South Bronx, you know, the police was chasing us down and this and that and that and this. And, and, and I wanted to be a policeman and I became a policeman. That's what I wanted to do. But then after I became a policeman, I, I you know, I kind of, hmm, things happened on the job that kind of like let me know that this is not a good decision. You know, and it wasn't because I was being shot at. It was because of the other stuff that was taking place. And I don't even want to go there. Because it's not about me. This is all about Jesus. And right now it's about you. So you come to, to a place where you realize, matter of fact, God says his people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. God says his people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. I like to add God's people are being destroyed be, simply because they don't choose the kind of life they want to live. They don't have a plan for how they want to live their life. Are you hearing me? See, we have to be able to see this. You know, uh, think about Lynn Hill going for that job. I mean, going for that exam today. Why? Well, she wants to change her life. And she realized she's got to take a step of faith. She's got to do what she has to do. I did my studying. I'm mentally prepared. I'm ready. And I know the Lord is with me. So I'm going to take this test. And guess what? I'm going to pass it. Why? Because if God be for me, thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? Favor, thank you, Jesus. Favor, the favor of God is on you this morning. The favor of God is on you. Grace and mercy is with you. Thank you, Jesus. God you so loved the world. God so loved you. I, I Look at the love that God is pouring into Jennifer at this time in her life. Not just her, even Pastor Sharon. I, I saw pictures of her and her daughter who passed. You know, thank God for cooking the granddaughter. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? So God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And there's not one of us going to go through this life and not deal with something that's designed to bring pain, hurt, shame. Are you hearing me? You know, but we don't have to stay in it. We don't have to stay in it. We can choose. Hmm. I can choose to rise up. I can get a plan together. I can do that something that's going to add purpose to my life. See, 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 we have to know why God sent us here. You have to know why God sent you here. Why are you here? What are you here to do? What's your function? What is your design? See, I'm not going to take a football on a basketball court. Not gonna work. A football not gonna bounce like a basketball. I'm not gonna take a a a, 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 a hockey stick to a golf course because that's not gonna work. That's not what it's designed for. What is your design? Oh man, I mean Donna could sing. I think about Mary Green, Lord Jesus, songstress. I mean they can sing. Ooh. Oh, geez, I think about Pastor Jackson. That brother can preach. Pastor Sharon, sister girl, can preach. Are you hearing me? See, you have to know your design. You have to know why you are here and what you are here to do. And then when you know why you're here and what you're here to do, you now have to do it. 
Now sit on the sidelines and wait. But no, it's about rising up and doing what you need to do. To do what? I want to bring glory to God. Because I realize and recognize if it had not been for him. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, Lord Jesus, what am I here to live, to accomplish? What am I here to become? You need to know God's will, plan, and purpose for your life. You need to know it, saints. The Bible says, if any man lacks with, lack wisdom, let him ask of God. All you got to do is come before the Lord. He'll let you know. He'll let you know. See, we be, you know, many of us are praying and we get down on our knees and we're praying and we're praying. But the real deal is we don't stay down there long enough to hear what God has to say. We so busy, you know, this is a, this is a, a, a monologue more so than a dialogue. A monologue is when you're talking to yourself. A dialogue is when you're waiting to hear what the other person got to say to you. God is still speaking today, saints. And all you need to do, sometimes you just need to sit just a little bit longer. Don't be so quick to go to Facebook and Twitter and, and to get on that, you know, television and all that other stuff. Think about when you come home from work. First thing you do, turn on the television. Get in your car. First thing you do, turn on the, after you turn on the ignition of the car, the keys of the ignition or whatever, or push the button to start your car. The next thing you do is turn on the radio. We, we got to be able to create that private time with God. I just need to talk with him. Why? Because I realize that my life is precious. My life is valuable. And because my life is valuable, I need to go to the manufacturer and I need to get, ooh, I need to get the plans that's going to bring me into my purpose. You were created by God to live life. Are you hearing me? To live life, not life live you, but you live life. You are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose, which means you have to learn how to control and manage your life. Mm, mm -mm. In the principles of time and change. Not just learn how to manage your life, but learn how to manage time and change, the elements of change. See, and this is why the word of God is so vitally important. I, I need the word of God because that's going to point me in a direction that's going to take me to that which would bless, that which would keep, that which would, you know, open doors of change. God wants you to, oh, Lord. I mean, he has supplied all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You know, you might be saying, what, 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 what is life? What is life? You know what life is? Life is simply changes in time. Life is change. Life is all about change. And this is why I say we have to be able to embrace change. You have to be able to embrace change. And I know everything that's coming your way is not feeling good. Lord Jesus. Some of you are dealing with sickness. Some of you are dealing with the pain. Some of you are dealing with separation. All of us is dealing with something that's designed to rob us of our joy. But this joy I have, the world didn't give it, and the world is not going to take it away because I know somebody and his name is Jesus. You got to love him, saying You got to love him because he's a keeper. And he's keeping you today. He's keeping you in spite of what you're going through. He's keeping you in spite of the fact that your money might be funny. He's keeping you in spite of the fact that man might have left. You might have a child you got to raise by yourself. Whatever the case might be. Trying to go to school. Trying to get an education. Trying to get a job so I can better myself. So I can up my game. I want my children to have something that I didn't have when I was coming up. Life is about change. And you have to be able to see that, man, you can't stop. You, just like you can't stop time, you can't stop change. But I will say this. You have to do what you have to do while you're able to do it. You know, hey, I've said this on many an occasion. You know, when I was young, I loved to play basketball. 
But I'm not going out there on the basketball court with them young boys today. Uh uh-uh. uh. They're hitting too hard. And, you know, my body too fragile. I'm, I'm not about to do that. Mm-mm. See, back in the day, I got a sprained leg. In a couple of hours, I was back up on that sprained ankle. I was back up on my feet again. But today I get a sprained ankle, I'll be down for a couple of days. Mm-mm, not today. Not me. I'm not playing no basketball. Not today. Are you hearing football? No. I never was into football anyway because I don't like to get a hit. Mm-mm, I don't want nobody tackling me. Not me. Are you hearing me? Now, I might have played some house and some merry-go-round and roses and all the merry mailman, all that other stuff. But, hey, I'm not even going back there because when I was a child, I did like a child. I thought like a child. But when I became a man, I put away the childish things. When I became a mature man, mature woman of God, I put away, you have to put away the childish things. That behavior, the lifestyle, the attitudes. I'm not doing that no more. There's some things we're not going to do no more. So life is simply changes in time. Changes in time. And so many of us are waiting on God to do, to do more. You want God to give you more, to do more, to bless you with more when it comes to changing your life. But the real deal is, is it a possibility that God is waiting on you? Could God be waiting on you? to do more with what you have, with what he has given you. All of us who want our life to change for the better. But are you doing what you need to do? Are you working with what you have, what you have been blessed with, given by God, the gifts, the talent, the skill, the ability? I mean, you have a great imagination. But have you put your imagination on the shelf, in a drawer, on lockdown? You know, we, you know, you can put a kid in a room with a piece of paper and a pencil. Or matter of fact, with nothing. I don't, not with, with little or nothing. And they can come up with something to do. Put a grown person in a room. And they will just, I don't know what to do. Why? Because we have allowed our imagination to escape us. You have to be able to see that, man, you are made in God's image after his likeness. He made something out of nothing. Lord Jesus. Now, I'm not at a place where I can make something. Well, then again, yes, you can. Use your imagination. You birth the computers and all of this technology. Hey, we can make, you know, hey, medicines. And I mean, where you look at where we're going today when it comes to technology and all of this stuff, hey, I mean, we've come a mighty long way. This is We're not riding stagecoaches, we're flying planes. Are you hearing me? In buses and trains and all this other stuff. I, I don't have to ride the bicycle today if I don't want to, but I do it because I want to exercise and keep my body in shape. So we have choices today. We have choices today. Choose you this day. How you want to lose, how you want to live, I should say, your life. Choose you this day. Stop waiting on God to do more than what he's already done. See, the power of choice is in your hands. The power to choose, the power of choice is in your hands. Choose you this day who you will serve. Will you choose God, yourself, or the devil? Who are you going to choose? Who you going to follow? The power of choice is in your hands, and that means massive changes have taken place or can take place in your life if you make a decision to do it God's way. Matter of fact, even if you don't do it God's way, massive changes can take place in your life because you can mess some stuff up. Mess some stuff up. You know, I'm still I'm still thinking about what my wife June brought, that word she brought on Monday. Think free so you can live free. See, we 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 just mm, we allow our minds to get so overloaded with all of the cares and the worries of this life. The Bible says we are all drawn away by our own lust. There's something going on in you that's working against you and not with you. 
And this is why the enemy want to get in you so that he can, let's just say, dismantle all of the good that you could do. Choose you this day who you will serve. You know, you look at the changes that are taking place in our society today. Over the past four or five years, I mean, some massive changes have taken place. And I'm not naming no presidents or naming no, no people and stuff like that. But we can see the changes that have taken place in government. Who man, our government's in a poor, I mean, a bad shape. Why? Because we have some poor, bad people in place that we have voted in, that the people have voted in. Why? Because they're not paying attention. Because they don't understand the importance of planning. They don't understand the importance of change. And they're just riding. Going anywhere. Going nowhere. Massive changes in family. Hey, look, look at this. Massive changes the government says. Same-sex marriage is okay. That floats your boat? Hey, that's you. You know, hey. Massive changes by the Supreme Court. Look at the Supreme Court. Lord Jesus. That last administration put in three Supreme Court judges. That's affecting us even today when it comes down to women's rights and Roe versus Ray, so on and so forth. Rights terminating pregnancies and so on and so forth. And I'm not here to say that that's right. But you women have been in a fight for a long time. And now men are trying to take you back. Hmm. Mm -mm. You look at the war that's taking place in Ukraine and how it's affecting our food, how it's affecting our fuel, how it's affecting our economy. Wars, rumors of wars. God spoke it. He said it now. Jesus said it. All this stuff. We can't even imagine how much food and rice and wheat and stuff like that come from Ukraine. And then the mere fact that we shutting down our relationship with Putin and Russia, who, who majored in the oil and the gas. Now we're paying high gas prices, the highest prices we've ever paid. Since the invention of the car, the automobile. Not to talk about what's going on even in our own families. With our children. The breakup, spouses, marriages. Children that might be incarcerated and stuff. Young men. Women. Young girls getting pregnant. Young age. So on and so forth. You know, there's so much going on. The shootings, the killings. You know, I mean, phew, Lord Jesus. It's, it's so much going on in our society today. And if we ever needed Jesus, we need him now. But let me add this. The only key to regulating and controlling change is planning. You have to have a plan. See, you have to have a plan. That's your game. What's your game plan? And life is not a game now. I'm telling you now because, hey, this thing hurts. It hurts whether you're playing by the rules or not. Life is going to hurt. But what's your game plan for succeeding and in, in, in bringing about that desired result? What do you want to happen in your life? What do you want to happen over you? Are you hearing me? And this is why it's so very important that we understand that, hey, we're here for some seasons. And I have to do what I have to do to bring about the will of God for my life. See, when I was a young man, I wish I, I, wish I would have done a better job of planning my life. Like I told you, I wanted to become a policeman. I became a policeman, so on and so forth. And I believe most of us will say the same thing. We wish we had done a better job at planning our lives. But what are you doing now? What are you doing now? See, I realize today that I will never know. While I'm here, I will never know 
what I could have done. But you know something? I can say today, truly, I am thankful for where I'm at today. In spite of my mistakes, God was able to bring me to a place where I can say, I'm too blessed to be stressed and I'm thankful. I am grateful, thankful, and I am blessed. And I realize God is not through with me yet. And, and, and the same God that's not through with me is not through with you yet. Are you hearing me? He's not through with you yet. And I sometimes think I, I would have avoided a lot of heartache, heartache and pain if I had made some better choices. If I did a better job of planning, and to tell you the truth, I really wasn't planning. I didn't really have no real big plans or ideas on how I wanted to live my life. I just wanted to do certain things, so on and so forth. But it's really about making better choices and decisions over our lives. My sister, my brother, you have to make better choices and decisions over your life. Don't just stop at point A. There's a C, D, E, F that can bring you even closer to fulfilling, you know, your purpose and 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 that and, and manifesting that dream and that desire that is in you. Don't let the devil rob you of your dream. Don't abort the promise or abandon the dream. Don't abort the promise or abandon the dream. The sooner you start planning your life, the better it can be. I, I gotta say that again. The sooner you start planning your life, the better it can be. And you have to understand now, your future is in your hands. Your future, I didn't say the future. Your future is in your hands. When you plan, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You have to take part in the planning of your life. Utilize that mind that God has given you. That imagination, I believe the Bible says, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and to that word. Casting down imagination, that negative stuff, the stinking thinking, let it go. He who has begun a good work in you, and he's still working in you, on you, and through you. But you have to have, what? A clear plan. You have to have a clear plan. A clear plan. Are you hearing me? Nobody else needs to understand the plan that you have, that God has given you. But do your plan make sense to you? I mean, I mean you're getting some stuff today, man. Do your plan make sense to you? See, it has to make sense to you. Write the vision and make it plain upon the tablets. You know, hey, you know the scripture. See, right? Oh, why? So when you're running, you're able to look at that thing there and remember why I'm here, what I'm here to do. You are not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You have to have a clear plan in direction that's going to define your purpose all that good stuff elements of who you are what's going to make you the man the woman god sent you here to be i tell you you are amazing you are amazing you're not you weren't sent here to be a copy a carbon copy of anybody else as i said the whole world's a stage and everybody's playing a part are you playing the right are you planning? Are you incorporating plans in your, let's just say, in your uh, in your ideas of what you want your future to look like? The life you want to live. It's up to you, saints. You want God to do more. He didn't do all of what he had to do. Now the, left, the rest is up to you. What are you going to do with the balance of your life? Man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have fun with you tomorrow. Lord Jesus. See, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? What are you going to do with the rest of your life? See, understand this, and I'm going to close with this because I want to say this for tomorrow. This I know is going to bless you, but I want to show you the power of planning. 
the power of change and planning. See, planning is a requirement for arriving at a destination. Planning is a requirement for arriving at a destination. When you got in your car to go from point A to wherever, oh yeah, well, I want to go and let me go this way. <coughs> And sometimes as you're driving to go to the supermarket or to, to meet up with your girlfriend or your, or your brother or whatever, family member, sometimes going on that route that you have planned, there's a detour. Oh, can't go that way because it's, you know, there's a detour. The street is closed. There was an accident. Can't, you know, everything is tied up. So what do you have to do? Well, you're, 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 if you got a GPS in the car, it will give you an alternate route. There's more than one way to get to a destination. And saints, I'm here to tell you today, you have to have a clear plan. You have to know and understand what your purpose is. And understand when the set the setback doesn't mean, hey, when you get that 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 blockage on the highway or, or, the, or the traffic is stopped and I can't go no further, I'm not going back home. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm going to recalculate. Matter of fact, your GPS will recalculate. You make a wrong turn, it will recalculate. Why? Because it is determined to get you to your destination. But now are you determined to get to your destination? And this is why we have to keep recalculating. That's change. That now we're talking about change. And it's that's change. You have to be able to see the importance of change. And we're given time to do it, what we need to do so we can get to that destination, that desired result. Man. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to end with this, but I'm going to start with this tomorrow. And we're going to really get into this. This is a powerful verse of scripture. You see, because God's strategy for planning. Your future is wrapped up in this verse right here. God's planning and strategy for your future is wrapped up in Jeremiah 29 and 11. I'm going to end with this and we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to meet up with this again. And here's what he says. And I'm reading it to you from the NIV. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in a future, to give you hope in a future, plans to give you hope in a future, plans, God is a planner, God is a planner, and, and you know, and, and, and when you think about it now, he's speaking to each and every one of us. He's speaking to each and every one of us. And I'm saying, man, you mean to tell me God has a plan, a perfect plan for my life? And then you mean to tell me he has a perfect plan for Elder Janine's life? He has a perfect plan for Sheila? He has a perfect plan for Donna? A perfect plan for Maria? A perfect plan for Mother Whitehead? Wait a minute, wait a minute now. How could he have a perfect plan for Pastor Sharon too? How could he have a, pl a perfect plan for, for, for Cookie? How could he have a perfect plan for, for Corinne Campbell? Matter of fact, have a perfect plan for Corinne Campbell's son. How could he have a perfect plan for Lisa and Lynn Mayo? How could he have a perfect plan for Keisha? How could he have a perfect plan for Pastor Ghost? How could God, I can't even phantom that. I can't even imagine how God could put together a perfect plan for all of us. But he did. But he did. But he did. And you know why he did it? Because you are just that important. A perfect plan for Christine Palenka. A perfect plan for Jonathan. In spite of, hmm, you might look, hmm. Like you're not able to make it, but God can bring the possible. He can bring about the, the possible situation out of those impossible situations. 
when man meet their extremity or reaches their extremity, that's when God steps in and do the impossible. My brothers and sisters, know that change is inevitable. Time, mm, you can't stop it. So we need to be able to manage our time through planning, proper planning, having a clear plan and understanding of our purpose, and then understanding that all things are working together for the good for those of us who love God. So even when it don't look like it, when you don't feel like it, if God is in it, there is no limit to what you can accomplish, what you can achieve, what you can become, what you can do.